What is up everybody, Sven Diesel here. We're going to be tying up a bird fur shrimp. Uh, it's just a shrimp pattern that we're going to be um, using some bird fur on. So let's go ahead and get started. We've got an A-Rex hook. This is an NS150, a size 6. This is for the salt water. And we're going to be using some uh, Semperfly uh, wax thread in an A-Dot. We want it to be uh, ultra durable here, and so we're going with a little bit of a heavier of a thread. And so I'm going to go ahead and get this started. I'm doing this in white um, just because we're going to kind of go with a white and peak um, shrimp pattern. So I'll start my thread, cut out my tag end, and then I'll kind of spiral this back towards the eye. And what we're going to do is we're going to tie in some medium um, dumbbell eyes. And what I do is I just line it up here with the eye, do about three wraps over, and on the third wrap I kind of pull down and it naturally seats itself. And then I'll figure eight it accordingly to get it um, so that it twists I'm doing some cross wraps and then I'll do some over unders as well to tighten those wraps up and then I'll do some more cross wraps because this is going to be dragging along the bottom and so I want to make sure these are super super durable <clears throat> I think I mentioned before one time I had the dumbbell eyes come out and I basically ruined my day because that was the fly that was working and I didn't have another so we'll go ahead and uh, now that that's secure I'll advance my thread um, all the way back well into the bend of this uh, this hook and then we're going to uh, secure those dumbbell eyes with a little bit of uh, just regular super glue. There's a, a few different um, glues out there, uh, zap a gap. I've just got some Gorilla Glue right here. Uh, let's make sure that those eyes are in the correct position. I'll flip it over to make it a little bit easier and I'll just go ahead and um, grab a little bit of glue here. And uh, like I said, it's just Gorilla Glue. Uh, it's not the gel because I want it to um, go ahead and dry fast. This is getting a little sticky might be time for a new bottle but I'll just brush that a little bit on and that's going to be drying as we're going to be working into our our fly now we got to think about the the fly body here in kind of reverse I want to tie in the material that's going to be um, on the top of this hook shank which will actually be in the middle and we're going to use some pink uh, crystal flash here I have about five or six strands um, you can tie in uh, before this the long antennae, but if you if you want, I just I bypass that generally because my rubber legs seem to not be um, durable on these things, and so I just bypass it and leave this crystal flash just a little bit longer. And so I'll tie that in, work my way up the uh, the shank there, fold it back over so I got plenty of flash coming off the back of this, and we'll go ahead and secure that, and then I will. Um, cut these so that they're about the same length. If you have a few fibers that are shorter or a few that are longer, it's okay. But generally, you just want to get these about the same length, and I'll secure that well into the bend because that is my middle material. And so I'll pull those and just go ahead and snip them. Now, for the bottom of this, I've got this uh, material that is called uh, uh, Voodoo fibers, I believe. I don't have the package here, but they're they're kind of a barred like waxy I don't know these things are just super flowy um, the white seems to have a lot of UV properties to it um, it really glows under that blue light so I'm gonna go ahead and grab about a good clump of it <laughs> roughly seven to eight strands I'll fold it in half and then I'll go and tie, and tie this in and what I want it to be is I want it to be half the length of that crystal flash um, you can go longer you can go shorter um, these are um, <clears throat> basically you we, we want it to be about half so that you know just use your measurement of what materials you're tying in I go half so that I know on the next one it's going to be half and uh, these could be also be considered part of the walking legs potentially um, or some of the uh, maybe smaller antennas uh, or antennae and we'll go ahead and fold that back over um, once I advance it just a little bit and then I'm going to kind of use a, a, a bucktail method I use here and I'm going to kind of splay these around to cover the whole bottom side of the shank um, that it's kind of cupping into that crystal flash so you can see I'm going to kind of pull it to the sides here that way it's uh, encompassing all that crystal flash and I still want it to kind of bend up just slightly and uh, we're well into this fly so we're, we're what uh, dumbbell eyes and this will be our technically third thing we've tied on um, the next step is we're going to be tying in the, the shrimp eyes. And if you've never made shrimp eyes, there's a bunch of different ways you can do it. I use 20, 30 pound mono. You can burn the ends. Um, I found that usually I end up 
lighting something on fire and so I've kind of st started doing UV resins but you could also do nail polish I just don't make enough of them to production make shrimp eyes and so what I do is I just use UV resin because I can you know do half a dozen relatively quick and I just take some black UV resin I'm going to um, basically um, get my light ready so it's turned on because sometimes it wants to drip on you and so I have it face down and I'm gonna go ahead and just put a drop right here on the end and then kind of spin it in my hand kind of let it soak into that uh, mono and then I'll go ahead and cure it that's why I have the light on um, because you need to be quick and so we'll go ahead and do that to the other side really fast and do the same process let it cure five ten seconds and make sure to spin it don't just cure one side go all the way around and now I'm going to take some of this uh, no tack UV and I'm just going to put another drop on and spread it all the way around it makes the eye a little bit bigger adds a little bit of depth to it and I also think it bonds it a little bit better to the mono last thing you want is these eyes coming undone after all the work and so same process just five ten seconds cure that up um, do both sides and you can see relatively quickly we made some shrimp eyes you can also purchase those um, but I found I always have mono right here and so it's pretty easy for me next step is we're going to be tying in these uh, shrimp eyes and I kind of want them curving outwards you 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 know when you buy them they're almost like a V and so I'm, I have it curving over the shank of the hook and you can spend as much time you can actually take a bodkin heat it up and bend that mono a little bit out I usually just tie it in and then do some wraps on the other side of it um, trying not to get that voodoo fiber tied into this mess and you can see there we go we got that about how we want it and then I'll get this other eye um, ready and I'll have it curving out to the other side making basically a V off the uh, the bend of the hook at a, a 27 and a half degree angle and so we'll go ahead and speed this up I just want to make sure I got them where I want them and I'll do some wraps to adjust that and then when you got it where you want it uh, you just go ahead and cut out that uh, um, loop that we created with the mono um, this also helps create a little bit of bulk there so it's got the beefier shrimp it, it helps with the taper um, that we're going to create so we don't have to use as much uh, body material and then we will um, clean that up uh, make sure those eyes are exactly how we want it and we are good to go to the next step so there we go we tied in our eyes um, they're right there kind of uh, coming off the back end in the middle of that voodoo fiber and crystal flash and then I want to advance my thread all the way up right almost behind those dumbbell eyes and now we're going to be tying in what gives it its name this is some bird fur uh, it's a, a, a spade chicken um, saddle and it's a this color in particular is pink and so what we're going to do is I'm going to pull off about three feathers kind of down here in this area and uh, these are a very unique feather I haven't played around a ton with them um, I've used bird fur before on some of my uh, leech tails but these, this is a little bit longer of, of some fibers and so you can see you got these long strands you've got some of this webbiness here we're going to be utilizing these long strands coming off the back and you can see the voodoo fibers are a third the crystal flash is two-thirds and then the tips of these are going to be um, third-thirds so basically we've gone in thirds off the back end of this and I'll go ahead and tie this in tying in all this webby stuff right here on the um, uh, shank of the hook <coughs> working my way back kind of making sure they're kind of going halfway around each side of the point of the hook and we'll advance back to where our eyes are and then clean that up as we work our way back up um, uh, to the uh, dumbbell eyes and we're going to tie in a second feather doing the same technique um, line up those tips so that it's aligned with the other feather and then kind of just pinch it in your hand there loose do a couple loose turns and then crank down as you advance back to um, the end of our body there and making sure we got about half going down each side and there we go so let's go ahead and trim out that uh, stem and so what we're doing is we're creating a, a pink underbody um, I tie a lot of these in in white ice stub and so I'm hoping that when it gets wet that pink is going to show through all that ice stubbing at the core so let's go ahead and uh, reposition our hook in there so that that uh, uh, hackle is coming all the way out and out of our way and here we're going to tie in some uh, some wire next because we're going to rib this with some black wire I do this on a lot of my shrimps because um, some pictures of shrimp I've seen have you know um, 
you know, you can either use, uh, they, they actually make shrimps like scud back material. I can't remember what it's called right now, but it, uh, it has like speckling to it. And for this, we're using a little bit heavier of a wire um, by Simperfly. This is the 0.3 millimeter because I want to make sure that it, it stands out and that it's going to be ultra durable. And so I'll tie that in, working my way back and then kind of holding it off to the side so that we can get that first initial wrap and it will just be smooth as butter. Now, we, uh, we got our last feather. This is the third feather, and I, I like tying these in thirds. I think it gives the correct proportion and the correct amount of feathers. And we'll have our thread right here back at the back, and I need to just kind of position it on the a little bit on my side of the shank, and then as you wrap, it's going to twist up and over and be right on top. And I'm going to do about four wraps here, maybe five. Um, we're not going to see this thread because this is going to be our first wire wrap to secure this. But I'll just double check this, making sure we got half going on each side of the point. I'll kind of get it out of the way, do a couple wraps in front of it, and now we are ready to tie in our body. And we're just going to do a, a dubbing loop here, and we are going to be tying in some uh, ice dub for this body. You could use uh, more hackle. You can use, um, I know there's a, a lot of different materials out there used for shrimp. Um, but we're just going to be using some ice dub and I believe, I don't know, this is a white pearl maybe. It's got some uh, iridescent blues and, and, and golds to it. And I usually like to do um, uh, two parts white to one part pink. But let's see how this looks with one and one. And I'm just going to mix it up right here in my hands, kind of twisting it together, pulling it apart, um, kind of restacking it. And I do want it a to be a little bit more white. And so I'll grab a little bit more of this white and work it in, blending it into a nice ball. Now, because I got extra material, it's going to be a little bit um, more difficult to stack. And so I'll go ahead and let's put some of this down um, out of the way. And then we'll go ahead and line this up by uh, stacking it, You're just um, spreading it out as we are aligning those fibers. So I just kind of pull it apart, work my way down. So pull it apart, pull it down, and then potentially if you got a big clump, do it again, and then stack that down. And you can see we've already thinned out our dubbing, and it's going to be perfect to just slide in that dub loop. So I'll go ahead and open that up and slide it in. We're kind of spreading it out. I'm still holding tension on this dubbing loop with my uh, kind of have my tool in my hand, and that looks pretty good. I'm going to want just a little bit more dubbing, so let's just pull this extra clump we have down here and I'll set it in. Um, you probably won't be able to see this, but I'm setting it in the very bottom of the loop facing me, and then we will go ahead and spin it up. You can go as fast or as slow as you want. Um, we're going to brush it out here. I have a nice stainless steel brush. I really love these, and since we're using that nice strong thread, um, we're, I don't think I've ever broken an ADOT. I better not quote myself. Maybe I have, but um, you can see I'm being pretty aggressive with this, so it's pretty pretty strong thread. And then I'll just do a little spin spin after that just to make sure any fibers we worked out are it's going to retighten. Now I'm going to do two to three tight wraps right here to kind of form our taper, and then I'll just from there on out I'll just spread it. Um, along this uh, with touching wraps, preening um, some of this ice dub back as I go and then as I get up towards these dumbbell eyes I'll kind of do a crisscross over and then back over the other way and then come under and then I'll go ahead and wrap it on top and tie it off and that is as easy as it is to do a body. You can see this body, I, I generally like it a little bit more white than this but uh, you know who, who's to say what I like and what the fish like? So let's just go with it. Um, the advantage to ice dub is it comes in like a thousand different colors. And when you mix it like this, you can create an infinity number of colors. So let's clean up, make sure our eye is good and clear from any sort of uh, ice dub there. And now here comes the trick. We're going to make our own kind of uh, um, shell to this. Um, we've we're going to use um, that wire that we tied in to make the abdominal segments. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fold this stem over. We, we've tied it in with four or five wraps there. And then I'm tying in basically the stem here. So this is going to be pretty strong and durable. And uh, I don't like this. I'll go ahead and trim this out. But you can leave it because we're going to be doing a, a resin um, abdomen here. Um, or abdominal whatever. And so let's go ahead and 
Uh, proceed now you can see we got that right across the back so let's grab our wire let's uh, make sure it's uh, free and clear from any sort of ice dub or uh, voodoo fibers or any of this bird fur so I'll just kind of work my way up uh, this is I'm trying to look around and find my uh, bodkin at this point and I don't see it I must let's just grab my scissors and I'll kind of just use the scissors to uh, work this wire through the material and then I'll come up and over that uh, thread wraps that we we'll use to secure in that last bird um, uh, fur feather and then I will use my scissors or you can use a bodkin to kind of separate that eye stub especially when coming up and over this side so that we're not pulling that eye stub up and over um, there we go and you just want to do equal segments as you work your way up and around this uh, this body I'll go ahead and speed this up because it could be a little bit tedious and just uh, make sure that you got your bodkin or scissors handy and we're creating those uh, abdominal segments with this and as we get up here towards the, uh, the hook eye I usually wrap the wire around twice and then we'll go ahead and secure that and um, we'll cut this wire out with uh, I just use my flush cutters since it's a, a 0.3 millimeter um, it's a little bit more difficult to you know do the twisty off and then we will check everything out and I'll just brush it out uh, mindful that we have not done our whip finish yet so this uh, potentially could come undone but I'll just brush it out see how I like it uh, making sure it looks good and I really like that and if you really want to make it look nice go ahead and pick some of this uh, dubbing that we trapped out and it would really really clean up that body and add more um, uh, bugginess to it and so like those swimming legs that we're trying to imitate with that and there we go so let's go ahead and we'll do a, a three turn whip finish this is going to be covered in some resin so we don't need to double up on it and so we'll go ahead and do that and I like to do them underneath that stem so that it kind of pushes that stem and that feather that we still have on there left to kind of be our, our, our flipper and so let's go ahead and start with a thick resin here and I want to make sure that my uh, my uh, fur here is on each side because once we resin this there's no going back so I'll go ahead and position that down and then I'm just going to lay down a nice bead here right along the top of this uh, this bird fur that we secured across the top and then I'll just use the side of this uh, uh, applicator to just kind of spread that out and make it flat and I'm, I'm also pushing down on that bird fur just a little bit so some of this resin gets trapped into that uh, ice stub. You can see it can kind of get a little bit messy. So I'm going to add just a little bit more. If you, if you try and use too, too little of material, you end up with more of the ice stub coming off. And if you use too much, it's just going to create a blob like right there. And we'll fix that. I'll just trim out that. that will, we'll, we can fix that. So just be a little bit careful. And uh, you know if it if you get a glob like that, uh, once you cure it up, just go ahead and snip it out, and it should be good to go. Now because that's a, uh, a non non tack UV, I'm going to use some more Semperfly no tack UV. I'm just going to kind of go over the top of this, and uh, kind of go off to the sides and create a really really nice, uh, um, I guess shell here. Yeah, that's going to be super durable, hold this whole fly together, um, provide for plenty of. Uh, um, feeding and, and hits and teeth marks and you can spend as much or as little time on this as you want but the key is just making sure it cures and then I'll put a little drop here on what will be the flipper and just kind of spread it out with that side of the uh, the needle there so that it's kind of making it a little bit more flat like a uh, like a flipper and uh, there we go so let's cure it up give it 10 to 15 seconds and then um, the last step is going to be to uh, take that uh, flipper and just trim that off. It's pretty easy and making sure that it's fully cured otherwise you'll end up with some um, uncured resin on your scissors. And then I kind of notch it by cutting out that V just so there's a little bit of movement there. Uh, but that's, you know, that's to each is his own. Um, see how you like it and see how it fishes. So um, there we go. That is pretty much a bird fur uh, shrimp. Pretty easy. Not a lot of materials. It uh, you can tie it up in a ton of different color combos, and it uh, should be super effective for catching those fish that are are wanting to have a little uh, shrimp cocktail. So um, I, this bird fur seems to really be um, awesome, flowy. It's got a really good length to it, 
and you can see how it's just going to blend in and look really nice with that uh, crystal uh, flash and that's a pretty good looking fly so tie some up fish them hope they uh, pierce some lips for you and uh, thanks for watching Thank you.